Hello everyone, probably the biggest point about today's video is we're going to take a look at some all metal Hall CNC gimbals for the Zorro. If you follow the channel, you know that the Zorro has become my favorite radio. Yes, I enjoy the gamepad style. Yes, I enjoy smaller radios. There's something about this angle that we have here and the fact that I don't use a lanyard, I don't hang it from my neck. The gamepad styles just allow me to relax a little bit. I don't feel like I have to get my elbows in here in order to get my hands out for the big squares. I've tried them. I've flown them. Matter of fact, I've spent years flying them. I just find that these fit me, my hands, and my comfort better. But... So we got those new gimbals that came out. We've also got a box, which if you pack to fly, the box or case, I guess, is a more professional way of saying it. Case is form-fitting, made specifically for this radio. So if you put that in your bag, your flight bag, that it should be uh, kept safe uh, from any sort of damage, at least while it's inside of its case. And Radio Master has also made some additional stick ends. Uh, they appear to be just different sizes and thicknesses of stick ends and also colors. I guess color is important when it comes to blinging out our radio. So one of the things about the gimbals is they're, they're very smooth. We've seen these before. They've come from, uh, they had them originally in the TX-16S, uh, a very, very popular radio from Radio Master, and they made the AG-01. These AG-01s are specifically for the Zorro, so yes, they are smaller, and uh, you have to open your radio in order to put them in, of course. That's uh, a manual process. I do not think they sell a version of the Zorro that comes with the AG-01 gimbal. So that's something that you're going to have to do ourselves, unfortunately. So the gimbals are packaged very, very nicely, like a, a, pre a premium piece of equipment. Um, it's got that real soft sort of plastic that goes around the gimbal and we uh, turn it off. It's got uh, bearings inside of it that are supposed to be high precision, long lasting bearings. Uh, the wires that they use to connect the gimbals to the uh, radio are, are nice silicone based wires. So we shouldn't have much of a concern about flexing them back and forth and them uh, breaking or wearing thin. And there are adjustments that you can make on the front of the gimbals, but there's only two adjustments that you can make and that is to choose whether it's a self-centering gimbal or if it is going to reduce uh, you want to reduce the travel on the gimbal so maybe you only want you want five degrees less of travel for some reason uh, I think I hear specifically about racing in some of these cases um, and they do come with metal stick ends that are all silver so if you don't want uh, silver they've got the options of blue red and black as well they both come with what we used to call the ratchet, which would be kind of your throttle for planes and it would hold position, uh, but it's smooth, unlike in other gimbals. But I think that's kind of becoming pretty standard to where it's just, you have to apply pressure to that uh, metal piece so that the uh, throttle stick presumably becomes more static as you let off of it, it doesn't move. I like real loose gimbals, so uh, mine are almost sloppy. I think most people would kind of hate how I set my radios up, but you know, we all like what we like. And uh, these gimbals are going to be very expensive and they're not going to be widely available, at least for a short time. I haven't seen them listed, at least at the time of this recording, I haven't seen them listed on any US based shops. So probably have to order directly from Radio Master. They do come with extra screws and an extra spring. I have never had a propensity to use those. Oh, not to forget the Allen key that they come with and a wee bit of instructions as well. Not a whole lot to look at those gimbals other than maybe those specs on the back of the box. Now don't get confused. Don't just search for AG-01 gimbals because you'll probably find the full size gimbals go to the TX-16 TX-16S, Pro, Max, that entire Radio Master line. So you need to make sure if you're just out Google searching that you're looking for the ones for the Zorro. And I'll put a link down in the video description below to the AG-01 Minis, which are for the Zorros. And with the magic of video editing, they are installed. And uh, probably one of the other questions that you've got right off the bat is about these uh, stick ends. Those are the thumb grippies specimens. Pinch stick ends. Uh, got mine from Get FPV. No, I have not tried the 533. Um, I think they're called grippies um, or rip sticks. I haven't tried those. On a whim, I bought these because, you know, I kind of pinched and I thought, well, you know, a nice rounded head. And I wasn't really certain if I would like something like this because I've been flying, you know, kind of the plastic or metal heads for a long time. But that's what these are. Uh, if you're Interested in something like that, getfpv.com is where I got those. But uh, back to the AG01s for the Zorro. I think the first question that a lot of people uh, might ask, or, or at least a portion of the people might ask is, you know, is it going to make your flying better? 
Probably not. Not unless you're already really good and then the amount better that it's going to make you is going to be really small. Where if you're already really good, it makes a big difference. And if you're not already really good, better than me, I'm saying by really good, way better than me, it, it won't matter that much to most of us is essentially what I would try to say. Now, do they feel nice? Yeah, they feel really smooth. Just like with the uh, TX16S uh, AG01 stick ends, they're very smooth. Uh, it does give you the feeling that they're more precise, they're higher quality, they're just they're just better gimbals. And they should be better gimbals. They should be more precise and they should be smoother because they are really expensive. Actually, I don't know what the price of the Zorro versions are, but... The gimbals on the AG01 for the TX16 probably cost more than the Zorro, so I'd expect these to come in about the same. So whether this is for you or not is really about you kind of deciding where your desire is for these sort of gimbals and where your budget is. If you're just wanting to go out and have fun and you don't have any desire to upgrade your radio in any way, there's no reason for you to do that. But if you're looking for a radio upgrade and you have the money, the AG01 for the Zorro or the TX16, Radio Master radios, it's probably one of the biggest impact because of how smooth it feels. Again, I'm, I don't think it'll make you a better pilot. I don't think it'll make your flying better. But you might get some additional enjoyment out of each and every flight because you do have these higher quality gimbals in there. Of course, you don't have to use these stick ends. They have their own stick ends. And yeah, I do like uh, sloppy sticks. I loosen them up. And that's one downside of these AG01s is that you you only have the two adjustment points on the front of the uh, gimbal for, I think it's whether it's uh, self-centering and stick travel are the two adjustment points you have on the front. So everything else you need to do while you're inside the radio. If you want to loosen your spring tension for uh, your pitch and roll or what have you, you've got to do that when you've got the back off of the Zorro because it just... it doesn't have those access points. Now, one thing you can do is uh, you could potentially, there's the, the the metal bracket over the back, so you can loosen that, but if you need to go beyond that, if you need to loosen the spring tension, you've got to open the radio up and to do that. Now, I do have a picture that I took, and one of the things that I wanted to point out was, well, some of the mistakes I made and save you some time. Okay, so here's the picture, and hopefully you can see my cursor up here as well. So obviously we've got the battery leads that come into these connectors, and I always recommend taking a picture before you start tearing stuff apart, whether it's a radio or uh, a quad. Take a picture, that way you know where the wires went, how, you, how wires are routed and whatnot. Uh, we've got, it's pretty straightforward really, but the things that I, I, there are two things that I wanted to show to you, but so this wire comes down here and then uh, we've got a, a slider up here. It comes around over here, down to the bottom too. Those come from your actual gimbals and you can just kind of follow them around to know which one they go to. And the same on this side, but they routed the, one of the cables from the gimbal out around here. Uh, so that really wasn't a big deal, but what did catch me out, and I don't know if we can see it because we've got these things up here. So let me zoom in and then lower this down, zoom in more, zoom in more. Okay, so these two black screws right here, you do not need to take those out. There is a plastic bit that holds uh, a different style of antenna, like you insert an antenna. I don't know why it's really there other than that. Uh, you don't need to take these two screws out, so that will be fine. Also, these two temporary or momentary uh, switches up here on both sides, those plastic bits will fall out, especially if you have the radio uh, leaning back towards you as it kind of naturally does. So be prepared to uh, grab those. And you do have to remove this entire back plate but really the only screws you have to take out after you've disconnected everything all the little connectors here after you've taken your picture of course uh, is there's a screw right down here in the corner we've got two here by the USB port and then we've got another one down here in the corner and this thing will kind of lift up and out so you take the bottom part where the USB connector is lift it up just slightly and then slide it all back there's a capacitor on each side about here and here watch for those so you don't bonk anything too terrible hard uh, I disconnected these connectors right from this uh, secondary board down here rather than from the underneath side of this board now when you flip this board up unfortunately I don't have a picture of it there is one more connector on the back side of this board uh, that goes to the power button so you need to uh, be careful not to just pull things apart haphazardly you know go slow be tedious about it also note that these screws do not have not removed these from inside these remove from the outside so when you're putting it back together another mistake I did was I put the screws in and then I couldn't get the shell cleanly shut 
Durr need to take those back out because those insert from the outside. And that's really it. It's pretty straightforward. It does take a bit of time. Uh, the ribbon cable, this thing flips up. You slide the ribbon cable out. Uh, it's pretty foolproof as long as you're not, you know, heavy handed or you're not just going, you know, like a bull in a china closet or something. Go slow, be tedious. Don't pull on the wires, pull on the connectors. Don't just jerk the ribbon cable out. Flip the little uh, release latch up and then uh, slide it out nicely, you know. Treat your equipment like you want it to be treated so you can use it for years and years to come. Uh, but those are the gitches. Those are the things I learned in my process. And while that's not really a review, it's just kind of showing them to you. I think the review part comes in and telling you that they won't make you a better pilot or they won't make your flying better, but they are nice to have. I mean, this is the second set and I have been flying with it. I've been actually doing some flying that will be seeing in a video coming up this week. And uh, I, I enjoy these gimbals. If you're asking me, if I had the money that it costs to replace these gimbals versus, say, uh, buying a quad, it's, it's kind of a hard thing because it's, you know, being in this position, it doesn't necessarily translate completely. But because you're using the radio with presumably all your quads, the radio would be one thing that you might want to upgrade. And it's, it's also something that you probably want to spend a good amount of money on. Goggles would be probably the number one thing is that you want to spend the most money on your goggles uh, just for the pure enjoyment factor of this hobby. But number two would be the radio because we use our goggles and our radio on all of our quads, or presumably all of our FPV quads. So therefore, maybe it's, a, maybe it's something you want to pursue. And if you do, I'll see if it's available for sale and I'll link it down in the video description. But generally speaking, if you go online and you search AG01, just like the boxes that I showed you said, and Zorro, you should be able to pull up any listing uh, in the location that you might be in in order to take a look at the pricing and see if uh, the price meets your budget and desire. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comments section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.